So let's look at the concept of equilibrium. Because thermodynamics is really all about equilibrium and how systems evolve as they move toward that state. Right? So we can think about equilibrium being defined as a state of rest. That's how we usually think about equilibrium before we've taken thermodynamics of materials, right? that a system is in a state of rest when it's at equilibrium. And we'll get to understand sort of what that means. But if, if you think about a sort of physics example, let's assume that we have a ball sitting on the top of a hill. We know that this ball is not in equilibrium that it can lower its energy by rolling down the hill, and that when this ball comes to rest, it will be sitting at the bottom of the hill. So down here is its equilibrium position, and one which has the lowest energy. And this idea of lowest energy will translate to the concept of equilibrium for material systems. So this is an example of a mechanical equilibrium we are interested in a more atomic view of equal example of that. So let's say that we have a cup and this cup has in it some water and the cup also has some ice cubes in it. All right, so our system is now water and ice, and the thermodynamic picture of equilibrium says, you know, how will this system evolve? So these two phases, water plus ice, can only exist in equilibrium, according to thermodynamics, if the temperature of the ice is equal to the temperature of the water, right? So that's what this system would look like. Obviously, if the temperature is higher than this temperature, which we know to be zero degrees C, if we're above zero degrees C, the ice would melt and it would become all water. If we were below zero degrees C, the water would freeze and it would become all ice. Just to sort of remind you of how we describe this kind of system, we could call this a unary system. It has two phases, so it's heterogeneous. Uh, we're going to define it as being closed. There are no reactions going on, and there's no other work, so the system is otherwise simple. So we can look at some other examples of equilibrium from thermodynamics, where we're looking at sort of an atomic level view. And one of those would be gas being held by a piston. Right, so we have in our closed chamber here some gas, which is at pressure P, has volume V and temperature T, and we apply a force here. The pressure that's applied is just the force divided by the area of the piston, and we know that the, we can either say that the volume of what's in here is a function of temperature at constant pressure, or that the pressure is a function of 1 over V at constant T. And this, of course, is just governed by the ideal gas law, right? And we can think of pressure sort of from a, an atomic perspective, where the pressure that's being generated here is from the gas molecules knocking into the piston. Okay, so that's an example that probably you're sort of familiar with in terms of what is equal. Consider another one. This would be for a unary, so single component system. And the map that sort of maps out the equilibrium space there is called a unary phase diagram. These are generally plotted in terms of pressure versus temperature. And could imagine, or we can consider one rather, that looks like this, where at very high temperatures we have the vapor or gas phase, 
at higher pressures and sort of intermediate temperatures, we have the liquid phase. Over here we have the solid phase. If we mark out this pressure here as being one atmosphere, one, and I tell you that this is for water, then we know that this is zero degrees C, and this is 100 degrees C, and so this unary phase diagram is sort of a map of what phase will be stable or what phase is will be in equilibrium for any combination of pressure and temperature. So if we're at one atmosphere, at low temperatures, our H2O, or water, right, will be solid. When we get to zero degrees C, it will melt and it will move to the liquid phase. And at temperatures beyond that, it will be a vapor phase. So this is one idea sort of of equilibrium. We, we can understand the uh, pressures and temperatures where the solid and liquid can coexist. So thermodynamics exists beyond one atmosphere pressure. Or we can understand sort of what the vapor pressure will be as a function of temperature and so on. For example of how we see equilibrium in thermodynamics would be for a binary alloy phase diagram. So let me attempt to sketch out here some version of the uh, aluminum magnesium phase diagram. And this looks something kind of like this. Not exactly, but close enough. So up here is the liquid phase, down here is the BCC phase, and over here is the HCP phase. This is temperature in degrees K, and down here is about 300, and up here is about 1,000. So this tells us, this is sort of a map again of, of what is an equilibrium, what phases, what are their compositions, and so on. So we know that up here we have a single phase region, down here we have a single phase region, and over here we have a single phase region. In here we have a two phase region. And let's say that we were sitting right about at this temperature and composition. We could use our phase diagram to read off which phases were present and what were their compositions. And we will come to that in this course. If our system is not already at this composition at this temperature, this is where it would evolve because systems evolve towards equilibrium. Of sort of where we see equilibrium in action in thermodynamics is for gas solid um, reactions, specifically oxidation. And so we've already seen this a little bit, but if we have a plot of delta G as a function of T. We could consider a couple different reactions, let's say titanium plus O2 forming titanium dioxide or aluminum plus oxygen forming aluminum oxide, right? So the aluminum oxidation reaction is more likely to occur because it has a more negative Delta G, let's label this. So zero is somewhere up here. If we look at what's called an Ellingham diagram, and we will come to these later in the semester, this plot puts a second axis around the side and labels on this axis the oxygen partial pressure. And this allows us, once we learn how to use these, to determine for any oxidation reaction at a given temperature, what oxygen partial pressure makes it such that this reaction is neither moving forward or moving backwards. So these are a couple of examples of what it looks like for a system to be at rest in terms of materials thermodynamics.